Hello everybody. Hope everyone is having a good week. It's a bit warm here in the southwest. Um, first of all, I want to thank Raphael. Thank you so much, sweetie, for sending me this information. And I'm sorry it's taken me so long to do a video on it, but I mean, things have just been crazy around here. Um, I'm just going to read his email. I'm sending a copy of a lawsuit in Spain. The Jehovah's Witness organization is suing the Spanish Association of Victims of Jehovah's Witnesses for the following reasons. Number one, the illegitimate in interference by the defendant in the right is declared to the honor of the religious confession Jehovah, uh, Christian Witnesses of Jehovah under the organic law of May 5th in accordance with ART 18.1 of the Spanish Constitution as well as arts. Number two, the name Spanish Association of Victims is eliminated of Jehovah's Witnesses registered in the National Registry of Associations. Um, on 12 February 2020 as well as the abusive content contained in the statutes and ex extinctions. Now, if I'm understanding all of this correctly, Watchtower is trying to erase any negative um, outcry against them and their organization. And they don't even want to help abuse victims. They just want to shut everybody up. Number three, the name of the web website named is eliminated. Victims as testigos de Jehovah.org, as well as the social media accounts of Facebook and Twitter called Association Espinal Victims Vitigos de Jehovah. And consequently, to his extinction, cessation is made in the disclosure of comments or information alike through any medium. Identification of damages for said violation only in favor of the religious confession witnesses Jehovah's Christians. The defendant is ordered to publish the heading and the ruling of the sentence with the same public dissemination with which they were released. The data that are considered illegitimate interference to the right to honor that is in the various digital platforms to be mentioned throughout the lawsuit. Order the defendant to pay the cost. Um, thank you very much. He also sent me the document which is in Spanish. Um, now it's interesting because you know, any organization, if I remember correctly, they tried the same thing in the Netherlands. Um, that group over there, you know, Watchtower was going after them just for trying to help abuse victims. And, you know, I understand if any abuse survivors don't want their information and names and stuff out there. You know, I understand that. We have to be careful about, you know, their names and information and all of that. Even if it's given in a public, you know, court document. But, you know, to totally shut down a group just for trying to help abuse survivors. I mean, this is just, it, it's typical Watchtower. It really is. Now, um, and I haven't heard anything new on the um, Kevin McFree, you know, lawsuit. Now, I do know uh, Goat Like Personality has done a video. And um, that lawsuit against Kevin McFree, who does the little Lego videos that we all enjoy, that lawsuit was even mentioned in a Norway newspaper. You know, so go check out Goat-like Personality. Jonas did a video on that. Now, I also want to thank Atlantis very much for sending me this information. So, I'm just going to read his email here. First, the 1936 June 15 Watchtower plainly states that the Watchtower speaks the words of God's prophet. In 1936, this would mean that Rutherford was God's prophet. And tell everyone in no certain terms that the anointed do not need any wise exogete. 
Now, he has here the word exegete means interpreter of scripture, meaning the anointed do not need a governing body or wise interpreter of scripture. And he's given me copy from the 1936 Watchtower here. And I'm just going to read it on page 182. This is the June 15th, 1936, page 182. Paragraph 18. Referring to those who find occasion to say before the brethren, the Watchtower contains nothing but the opinion of a man. We have been mistaken in the past, and why not understand the Watchtower is now mistaken? You know, and that's what a lot of us have been saying. If they've been wrong in the past, and people have lost their lives over it, you know, why should we believe them now? You know, if they were wrong in the past, how do we know they're right now? Yeah. Such persons should remember that the watcher sets out the words of God's prophet, and alongside that prophecy sets down the physical facts well known to all, that each one who is of the temple class may readily decide what is and what is not in fulfillment of the prophecy. But the problem is, if you say, oh, well, this isn't in fulfillment of that prophecy, you know, like that generation, oh my God, you're disfellowshipped. Can you imagine if any of us would have said prior to 2010, oh, that generation is not of the 1914 class, we would have been kicked out and, you know, marked as apostates. But yet now they've changed it and they were wrong in the past. And now, oh, well, it's the overlapping generation. This kind of stuff is just so infuriating. Now I'm going to skip down to paragraph 19. You have to excuse me, I need new glasses and it's difficult seeing some of this stuff on my computer screen. Now concerning the prophecy of Obadiah, note that this statement is made, Thus saith the Lord God. Obadiah's uttered words are therefore not a dream or a hallucination or a man's guess or opinion, but the sure an unfailing word of Jehovah God. The purpose of the prophecy is to enlighten the remnant of God's people now on the earth that they might stand strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Likewise, the watchtower emphasizes the word of God and not the guess or opinion of man. God and Christ Jesus are the teachers, and the anointed do not need the aid of some self-constituted wise exogete. To such anointed ones the scripture replies, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye not need that any man teach you, but as the same anointing um, teacheth you, teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it hath taught you ye shall abide in him oh my goodness so the anointed do not need a governing body or wise interpreter of scripture but yet you know that's exactly what they think they need the governing body oh you know they're the mediator between Jehovah, Jesus, and the great crowd. And even, you know, of the anointed. So even now, you know, it's like, wow. On the next page, 183. Um, down in paragraph 22. The following definition is published in the book Government, page 283. The name Edom represents that which is opposed to the Lord. It has the same meaning as Esau and therefore refers to the organization of Satan, the most reprehensible element of which is ecclesiasticism. Here, enlarging upon that definition that it may be made more specific, it is stated that Esau or Edom more specifically stands for and represents that class of men who have organized and carried on religion in the name of God and Christ, but who in truth and in fact have been and are the representatives of the devil, and hence a part of the devil's organization. 
that clearly shows that the anti-typical Edomites are made up of the Roman Catholic hierarchy and their clergy allies who have used the Word of God for a selfish purpose. Now over here on page, um, well the same page, 183, paragraph 23, the last sentence in the bottom of that paragraph, the clergy are the anti-typical Edomites and are the most deceptive and reprehensible part of Satan's visible organization. Well, watch her talking about themselves again. Um, then he says something else going on with Atlantis' email. In May of 1930, the branch overseer in Germany made his own artwork on the front cover of the Golden Age magazine. Most Golden Age magazines showed a nude man holding a staff or stick looking into the horizon of the sun, as you can see from the screenshot. However, the 1930 May 1st German Golden Age showed not a nude man, but a nude woman with hair to the center of her back and on her knees honoring or praying to the sun. And this is what we've mentioned in several of our videos in the past. That you, once you start doing research and learn about sun worship, and how many of these religious organizations and Jehovah's Witnesses know that they are part of worshiping the sun. And not the S-O-N as in Jesus, but the S-U-N as the sun in the sky. Interesting. So I want to thank all of you for your wonderful comments and phone calls and cards and emails for your love and support. We appreciate it very much. And like I said, I'm sorry I didn't, you know, get to this video sooner, but I was so busy, you know, with researching and trying to get my one my video done on the Russells that and I mean there's so much more to that. Um once I got that video uploaded, I found some more in that 1906 watchtower. So and we're still working on a nail in coffin. Um, I've got the coffin lid done. And um, I'm working on my list. So if you want to be on the coffin lid, just email me at KimmyMBrooks at gmail.com. And in the subject line, put coffin lid. And you can give me either just your first names or initials. And just let me know if you left prior to 2014, since that's when we started the coffin lid, or if you left after. So you all have a wonderful week. Bye.